Today I'm going to talk about nerve compression in the upper limb. The nerves in the upper limb are named like a tree. So in the neck you have the roots coming out of the neck. They form trunks. Those trunks then turn into branches with some of those branches becoming named nerves. And what I mean by a named nerve is that one of the named nerves is the median nerve that goes down the front of the forearm, the ulnar nerve that goes behind the back of the elbow and then down the forearm, and the radial nerve which goes down the back of the forearm. When you are trying to diagnose a nerve compression, you have to be aware that the nerves can be squashed in a number of different levels from the neck all the way down to the wrist. If the nerve roots in the neck that are squashed are the same nerve roots that eventually make up one of the name nerves, for example the median nerve, then if those roots are squashed they can give the same symptoms in the hand um, as if the nerve, the name nerve is being squashed in the wrist. So you have to be careful from the pattern of symptoms alone in diagnosing where the area of compression is because where the area of compression is depends on the type of treatment. So treatment of nerve compression in the neck is going to be a lot different than treatment of nerve compression in the wrist, for example. So symptoms for ner of nerve compression. So a patient who presents with nerve compression will have symptoms of numbness and pins and needles in the fingers. This can be the temporary or continuous. You can get pain in the distribution of the nerve as well. The numbness and pins and needles is also in the distribution of the nerve. So if there are numbness and pins and needles in certain digits, then they can then be associated with a certain nerve being compressed. The two named nerves that are most commonly compressed in the upper limb are the median nerve and the ulnar nerve. The median nerve compression is by far the commonest. Now median nerve compression is called carpal tunnel syndrome. Now carpal tunnel syndrome is where the nerve, the median nerve, is being squashed in the carpal tunnel. Now the carpal tunnel is called because you have a U-shape of carpal bones in the wrist, just here. And then to make up the tunnel, you have a ligament over the top, which makes a whole tunnel. Through that tunnel run the tendons to the fingers and the thumb and the gliding layers that surround those tendons. The tunnel is also shared by the median nerve. So if the contents of the tunnel is too big, too much for the diameter of the tunnel, then the pressure increases, it squashes the nerve, and then you get symptoms in the distribution of that nerve. And in this particular case of the median nerve and carpal tunnel syndrome, you get symptoms of tingling and numbness in the thumb, index finger, middle finger, and part of the ring finger. The reason you don't get it in the little finger is because the nerve that supplies that finger with sensation is the ulnar nerve, and that nerve goes over the top of the tunnel so therefore, if there's an increased pressure in the carpal tunnel, it doesn't affect the ulnar nerve. So it tends to be classically this side of the hand. Most patients with carpal tunnel syndrome have intermittent symptoms, most commonly at night time. So the hand is fine in the daytime, but they wake up at night time with numbness in those fingers, have to classically shake the hand over the end of the bed, and then they go back to sleep. Some patients have it every night, to varying different degrees of severity, some patients only have it occasionally. If a patient has nighttime symptoms only, then this can be treated with night splinting. So you give the patient a splint that keeps the wrist straight at night, because when you bend the wrist down or keep it in a bent position, then that can bring on the symptoms. So by keeping the wrist straight at night, then you're preventing that from happening, because you all tend to sleep a little bit like that. Prevent that from happening, and that will help 
with um, the symptoms in a significant number of patients and avoid the need for further treatment. However, you do have some patients that will get um, symptoms in the daytime, symptoms when they're gripping, say reading a book, driving a car. And for those patients and those that do not respond to the night splinting, then we have to look at alternative treatment. Now, a temporary treatment um, is a steroid injection, where you can put a steroid injection into the carpal tunnel, and that tends to calm down the symptoms in most patients. However, it will wear off in almost all patients given time. And it's difficult to know how long an injection will last, whether it will last for two or three months, whether it lasts for six to 12 months. You don't know until, until you've had the injection. So you do have the option of repeating the injection, but if the injection is not successful enough or it wears off too quickly, then we're looking at a surgical solution. Now, the surgical solution um, is where you release the tunnel under local anaesthetic. So what you effectively do is, is you have local anaesthetic in the palm, a cut along the palm here, and then underneath the skin, you divide the ligament that makes up the tunnel. So the tunnel then parts, the ligament heals at a longer length, and increases the diameter of the tunnel. This therefore decreases the pressure and relieves the symptoms of your carpal tunnel syndrome. Now, carpal tunnel surgery is a good operation. It will relieve the symptoms permanently in the vast majority of patients. The patients that do not get full symptom relief are often patients that have had significant symptoms for a longer period of time and so therefore the nerve doesn't recover as well once you have released it. It is a permanent solution and it is rare to get recurrence following the surgery. However, it is an operation um, and it does have minimal risks. The main problem with the operation is you have a sore scar afterwards that takes a while to settle down and you have to work on that once the stitches are taken out but in almost all cases that scar pain will settle down. Using the hand, I'll let you use it the next day, but it is achy and sore and you do lose your grip strength for a good number of weeks. But it is a good solution for um, carpal tunnel syndrome in those where conservative treatment has failed. If I am unsure of the diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome, despite examining you, um, for the pattern of distribution and doing some special tests in clinic, if I'm still unsure as to the diagnosis, then I can send for nerve conduction tests first to confirm that the condition exists before you would consider something like surgery. However, in most cases, you can diagnose carpal tunnel syndrome from the pattern of symptoms and the test that I would do in clinic. The second commonest nerve compression in the um, in the arm is the ulnar nerve. Now the ulnar nerve runs behind the elbow in a tunnel and that supplies sensation to the little finger and classically half of the ring finger. It also supplies a lot of the muscles in the hand and those muscles are involved in fine coordination and manipulation. So a patient may not only present with some numbness and pins and needles but may present with some weakness of the hand or a feeling of discoordination. Again, like carpal tunnel syndrome, there's a different spectrum of severity from patients who have intermittent numbness and pins and needles. And it is quite common at night time because we sleep like this to get numbness and pins and needles in the, those two fingers at night time, which then wears off during the daytime. And that is very common. And the reason why you get this is because when you bend the elbow, the diameter of the tunnel behind the elbow decreases by around 50%. So if the nerve is quite snug in the tunnel already, when you flex the elbow for a period of time, then that will bring on the symptoms because the nerve gets compressed. For those patients with nighttime symptoms only, again, it's a um, modification of sleeping in a sense, is that we try and sleep with our arms straight. 
and that can be helped by wrapping a towel around the arm for example with, and then sellotaping it on to prevent the elbow bending fully or the therapist can make splints um, to, try, to try and prevent the elbow bending at night time. You then eventually train yourself to sleep with the elbow straight and then most patients with just nighttime symptoms only will not need further treatment. Some patients who have it more severely will get it in the daytime as well. For example, if they're leaning on a table. Um, so, for example, if you're on an office-based job and you're leaning on your elbows, the nerve is very close to the surface and so therefore can be compressed by leaning on it. Um, also, if you're on the phone or driving or reading a book with your elbows flexed, then that can bring on the symptoms in the daytime as well. With this, I would recommend activity modification first of all, say hands-free foam, um, maybe a small fold-up item of clothing to put underneath your, your elbow when you're at your desk typing, and that might be enough for um, a number of patients. However, if that is not enough, or a patient has um, constant numbness and pins and needles in those fingers, I will often get nerve conduction tests first to confirm the diagnosis, but then if it is confirmed or the symptoms are significant enough to suggest compression behind the elbow, then an option then is to release the nerve behind the elbow with an operation. So in a sense, it's similar to carpal tunnel surgery in that you divide the ligament over the nerve. Um, but in this particular case, it's usually done with either putting the whole arm to sleep with an injection around the shoulder with the anaesthetist or having a general anaesthetic. You then have a cut behind the elbow here, about three centimetres, and then the nerve is released. Recovery from this is quicker than carpal tunnel surgery, as I let you use the arm straight away, and the discomfort and restriction in strength and movement and function is usually fairly minimal. So, in summary, nerve compression of the upper limb, you have to be sure um, if you're considering treatment for it, especially surgical, that you have the correct site of compression. And this can be found by history and clinical examination or further tests such as nerve conduction studies. If conservative treatment doesn't work, then um, nerve release with an operation is often very successful with minimal um, risk of complications or problems.